Smash games have a lot of censorship in them, more than you may expect. Remember when they removed blood from Joker's final smash and replaced it with sparkles? Or the infamous Mr. Game & Watch move change? Or Steve's meat getting patched out of the game? A lot of these blew up and took over the internet, but others, not so much. Camilla has some slight differences between her Smash Spirit artwork and how she looks in Fire Emblem Fates, likely to suit a lower age rating, which made some fans upset. I guarantee if she looked like this, she wouldn't be in Japan's top 20. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong though. This guy says if they could just censor the rest of her and everything Fire Emblem related, that'd be really neat. <laughs> Yo. But this seemingly sarcastic comment wasn't too far from what actually happened. Tharja is another character who got censored in the game. While all the other Fire Emblem Awakening characters got their official full body artwork for their spirit, Tharja instead uses the one portrait from Awakening that's cut off at the top half of her body. Hmm... Still not convinced? There was a leak before Smash 4 released in 2014 that showed some trophies that'd be coming to the game. This was a massive dump, but there was just one trophy from here that didn't make it in. Yup, this trophy of Tharja was originally planned to be in the 3DS version of the game, but it got removed. While she's still dressed in her standard outfit here, it seems like the ratings boards found it to be a bit too scantily clad. Kinda weird how this got banned though when some others were allowed to be in the game. Oh, this one got censored too. I mean, okay, at least these aren't present in actual gameplay or anything like that, it's... Man, really? Even details like this aren't safe. So this got me thinking, if there's this much censorship in just one series, does every series with a fighter in Smash have some censorship too? And if so, what's the biggest case of all? In our search today, we're gonna find some of the craziest instances of complete censorship in Smash, but others are gonna be a bit more debatable. Back when Smash games used to have some demos of retro titles in their masterpiece section, man do I miss this feature, there were a couple of Fire Emblem games that were left out of the international releases and were only in Japan, these being the demos of Mystery of the Emblem in Brawl and Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon in Smash 4. Now this may just be because of the Smash team thinking people overseas wouldn't know much about these games, but it could also be because of some censorship in the translation from version to version. I already alluded to Lin, and her trophy description is a great example of this. While in Brawl the Japanese trophy description lists her age as 15, as that's how old she was in the original version of Fire Emblem Blazing Blade, internationally her age was displayed as 18. Yeah, they were trying to be as cautious as possible. Speaking of caution, the Palutena's guidance scene while playing as Robin spoils part of Fire Emblem Awakening in the Japanese version, which they got rid of for the English releases. I found this one kinda hilarious because they definitely got hit with the oh crap this is the first game in the series that anyone's actually bought overseas, better be careful not to cause any controversy. See, they know what they're doing sometimes, man. Whether you consider these cases censorship per se, I feel is up to interpretation though. I'm gonna casually steal an idea from Iceberg videos by showing a confidence level beside each character today to show how much I really think they were censored. While the original examples I gave are undoubtedly outright censorship, I'd say these are slight reaches. We'll see how many more are like this as we go on. Fire Emblem's gotta be up there for one of the most censored series out there though, but it definitely isn't the only one. Our family-friendly Super Mario series isn't safe from this kind of stuff either. Now I definitely never do this, right? But some people say that if you use the camera viewing feature in a very specific way, you could see that there are black voids underneath Peach and Rosalina's dresses, covering them up. Obviously, right? Yeah, man, why is it only for the female characters? Double standard. But well, for some reason it didn't take very long for the Smash fanbase to find this detail, it took some time before a removal in the Luigi's Mansion stage was found. For some reason, in Smash Brawl and Wii U, there's a face of a boo underneath the crib in the nursery room of the Luigi's Mansion. What? This is such a strange place to put a ghost face, and I'm guessing it didn't get much attention because it could only be seen with a hacked camera. But even so, it still got removed for Ultimate's version of the stage. This will be the first one I'll tag with a desperate for content marker because I really don't know if it counts, but I found it kind of interesting that someone would put this thing under the crib, it then went unnoticed, and then for some reason they changed it 10 years later. Speaking of lengths of time, ever wonder how old Mario is? While the canonical answer has varied a lot over the years depending on who you ask and when, the Smash devs wanted to come right out and say it. Well, in the Japanese version of Melee at least. 
Yep, in Mario's trophy description, it makes mention of him being 26 years old, but this detail got cut for all international releases of the game. Nintendo's probably afraid that saying he's older than the target demographic for the game will make him unrelatable, and Smash hasn't touched on this since. Probably because they're too busy talking about what Yoshi's biological sex is. Moving from Mario for a bit to the completely and totally different Yoshi series, his trophy in the international releases of Melee removes part about him not having a biological sex after it said that in the Japanese version. This is another thing that's caused a lot of speculation in the community. In a world where simpler marketing is usually what wins, this is a no-no to Nintendo of America. At least they still seem to like featuring Yoshi though, cause that's not really the case in Germany. I don't know what they have against Yoshi, but for the German release of the game, Yoshi is removed from the box art. What's the deal, dude? Oh, we had to make space, just to move him somewhere else! The Zelda franchise has gone through something similar. While the gimmick is that people think Sheik is a guy when she's actually Zelda in disguise, so they have a read to use male pronouns in the Palutena's guidance section, whereas the rest of the game calls her a she, Sheik's gender is instead never brought into the conversation at all in the Japanese version of this section, which I found pretty interesting. But whether it's deliberate censorship or not is up for a debate. Same goes for the trophy descriptions of the re-dead creatures. While the Zelda games specifically state that they're undead monsters, Smash's description calls them quote, clay monsters fashioned in the shape of humans, not directly addressing that they're undead as would be expected. I've seen some comments from previous videos where I've talked about censorship mentioning that the great fairy from the series also got censored in Ultimate, so I investigated it. Turns out they used the Majora's Mask 3D artwork of the character rather than the less tame appearance from the original game. But I mean, almost every opportunity to use new art over old, you'd take if you're the development team, right? I don't know if I buy this one. Getting back to our little list of things that a certain segment of the community discovered immediately is that Zelda's legs can no longer be seen when you pause the game and zoom in, unlike in previous installments, now being replaced by a black void. How dare they. Marking this with a reach still though, cause Zelda did get a design change for Ultimate, so this theoretically could have been done in previous games. One of the funniest pieces of censorship though has gotta be how Viridi reacts to Link in the Japanese version of Palutena's Guidance. This version of the combo has an extra line of dialogue where she dreamily calls out Link's name, calling him Link-sama, but we didn't get this anywhere else! Why? We need this character development, Nintendo. I don't care what artists are gonna do with this, let me enjoy my Smash Bros. While this removed line I think would have been able to pass with the ratings boards if Nintendo really wanted it, I can't say the same for the changes made to Palutena's dress. While censorship with characters like Peach and Zelda was done universally, a change lengthening the dress in Palu's trophy was a Japan exclusive in a Smash 4 patch. Yeah. I feel many tend to associate Japan with allowing some more risque content over there, and while that seems true for the most part, that's only for the higher age ratings. In an interview, series director Masahiro Sakurai confirmed that the CERO, Japan's rating system, is quite strict with the depiction of characters and games that are available to a younger audience, and this was certainly a victim of that. Still a very special and unique case where the character is only censored in Japan, and everyone else can still see this. No doubt something all ratings boards want to avoid for a young audience is blood. Joker's victory celebration now shoots sparkles instead of blood, which has got to be one of the weirdest replacements, but okay. And in that same Final Smash, one of Morgana's quotes got censored as well. In Persona 5 he would say, time for some bloodshed, but in Smash Ultimate the word bloodshed was replaced with brutality to fit the game's age rating. Keep this in mind for later though. And now I present to you, ahem, <clears throat> Smash Ultimate's musical censorship. The Persona song Mass Destruction has a line that says covers whole society damn right, whereas in Ultimate it was censored to covers whole society all night. A bit overkill, but kinda clever nonetheless. Similarly, the DK rap which has a line one hell of a guy was altered to one heck of a guy for Smash. Yeah, this one kinda sucks. It was pretty weird though, cause it's not like Smash is above referencing hell. This guy says Ken's back throw, Sephiroth's down air, and Kazuya's special grab allow us to introduce ourselves, all of which have hell referred to in their names. What's even more ridiculous is that Donkey Kong 64 has an even lower age rating than Smash does. And this is the game that has to censor the word? What? For Sonic, the song His World only got an instrumental version unlike every other Sonic song that has lyrics in the game. 
This is probably because of the line, he's kicking ass fast, which I understand more than the others for this kind of game. Hey, if you're mad, at least they got it in in some way. Pikmin and Metal Gear both had songs in Brawl that were completely removed for Smash Ultimate for fear of copyright. There had been some plagiarism allegations going on, and I guess they just didn't want to deal with it. Naughty Pikmin. Final Fantasy definitely had some problems with music when it debuted in Smash as well. Literally only two music tracks were included with the Cloud DLC in Smash 4. A shockingly low number for a series with so much to offer in this regard. This stuck around for Ultimate as well, only getting bumped up when Sephiroth was added to the roster. So I think it's fair to say there was some heavy restriction with the original. Censorship, I guess? As a matter of fact, the Final Fantasy series has been heavily restricted outside of music too. For these same reasons, likely copyright being inconsistent from region to region with Square Enix's stuff, we had a severe lack of spirits at first. Alternate costumes of Cloud and even Sephiroth were limited as to how much they could change the character. And Final Fantasy is the only base game major third party universe to not have any assist trophy at all in the game. Hey, at least they solved the music issue though. That makes up for everything, right guys? We'll touch on some more censorship from these series in a bit, cause it extends far beyond music for some. But you know what, I honestly think people need to cut Square a bit more slack. I mean, it's still crazy how we even got characters that they've worked on in Smash. Just look at Sora. Oh, well, maybe we shouldn't look too close. Disney might top Square Enix for the most desperate company to protect their characters. In the back of the stage, the original version of this image contained Donald Duck and Goofy, two major Disney icons. And this wasn't allowed to be in Smash, being completely censored out. I'm sure the fact that they're not gaming original characters didn't help either, but that's definitely not the main issue here. Nintendo may have gotten Sora, but Goofy is premium. Kingdom Hearts censorship extends to other series as well. Kirby is known for his copy ability to steal signature moves from other characters, but for Sora, this isn't exactly the case. Instead of obtaining the famous Keyblade, Kirby famously gets this glorified glow stick instead. The Mickey Mouse ears just couldn't go on this little guy, huh? Now while the reasoning of Disney not allowing it seems pretty obvious to pretty much everyone, there are some people, and I'm talking about those people that believe Nintendo's statement that this was a canonical decision. Sora is the only one in storyline who could use the Keyblade, so that's how it should work in Smash. And you know what? Fine. Even though this goes against everything Kirby's copy ability stands for, I would have accepted it. If they already didn't break this kind of rule several times. Kirby's not heir to the Monado, but can not only wield it, but can use its power as well. He's not linked to Pyra or Mithra, but can use their weapons and abilities. Kirby's not part of the Altian royal lineage, but can use the Falchion. Like, there's so many cases like this. Don't try to tell me this, Sakurai, we're on to you. One of the biggest cases of third party censorship didn't technically happen with a third party character. Okay, I promise that's gonna make sense in a second. The Miis were a great addition to Smash in that they allow you to customize them to be basically whatever you want, adding in many more character possibilities than many originally thought possible with all these outfits. But some non Nintendo ones were introduced in a mysterious way. In several Smash presentations in the Mii section, the name of the game series would be changed if it was M rated like Devil May Cry, Fallout, or Skyrim, a lot of the time just in the North American trailers. And this is because of a modern ESRB policy that basically says if you show an M-rated series in a presentation, that presentation is also M-rated, which is insane. Although it did lead to a pretty funny thing where Travis Touchdown's Mii costume showed the screen Super Smash Bros. X Travis, leading to some people thinking it was something else. This doesn't get talked about too much, but it was huge. And, well, speaking of huge, um, yeah, well, well, I have to talk about Steve's meat now. I wish that transition was better too, I'm not very good at this. This one was just funny, and I'll leave it up to you as to whether or not it was intentionally there. But in Steve's victory screen, he would originally consume the meat like he does in Minecraft, and just hold it in this position, resembling something else in the minds of the Smash fanbase. This went viral on Twitter and pretty much all social media to the point where Nintendo actually patched it out. They never mentioned this once in the patch notes either, so I'm guessing this was probably something that slipped through the cracks that the higher ups never noticed the correlation to earlier on. Another infamous patch that I referenced earlier was the Mr. Game & Watch pre-release situation. If you didn't know, this guy originally had a native feather on his head while performing his forward smash in Ultimate pre-release footage. Now this attack was nothing new for Ultimate, he's always had it just without this extra detail. 
This was a new design choice that was incorporated here likely to be a closer reference to how the enemy characters looked in the original Fire Attack game where it came from. Interestingly enough though, this part of the design was actually removed from the characters in the Game Boy Advance remake of the game, so if it was deemed all the way back in 2002 that this would be insensitive to some people, it's puzzling as to why it still slipped through the cracks for Ultimate. Nintendo responded to fan criticism over it being considered an offensive stereotype and it was removed in an early patch. While some felt it was making a big deal over something minor, I still think it was the right call, cause you have two options if you're Nintendo. Either take a stand for the original that was still offending some people, or simply take it out while still maintaining the reference to the GBA version and make those people happy. It was really a no brainer, and getting upset about it seems pretty extra to me, but while this offensive imagery was placed front and center, there's another bit of censorship that's been hiding for years. While researching censorship in the Wario franchise, I stumbled across some online chatter from 2008 claiming there was a censored image on the official Smash website. These posters claimed there was an image of Wario Man in a pose that resembled that of a Nazi salute that quickly got taken down and replaced with another picture. The only thing is there's no hard evidence of the original today, at least that I could find. This was corroborated by multiple people at the time though, I don't see why they have too much reason to lie. Especially since similar poses can still be seen with the character's model by pausing at certain moments in the game. I'd assume this was just an unfortunate coincidence, but it's not the first time it would have happened with Nintendo either. I'll give this the full censorship tag, but if it doesn't satisfy you, we'll always have Wario's dump truck that's been censored in other games as an honorable mention. Doing a quick check in here, seeing the series we've covered so far, lots of censorship has been uncovered, but still tons to go. It's safe to say that some cases will be difficult to find, and others will get crazier than anything that we've seen yet. In a similar vein to Wario's alleged censorship, the Star Fox series has something that, while not unique to Smash, is still present in the game, so you can be the judge, but Andros, the main villain for many Star Fox games, is called Andorf in Japan. According to Takaya Imamura in a 2002 Nintendo Dream interview, the reason why his name was changed to Andros in the western localizations is for fears that the original name had Nazi overtones, presumably suggesting that the name's spelling had some similarities to Adolf, which you'd obviously want to avoid. This meant that it's stuck ever since, but it is still in every Star Fox game and definitely not a Smash unique censorship. I wanted to include it since it was suggested, but it's not realistic to assume the Smash team is just going to come out and change the name back. Another name change that affected Smash in an interesting way is with Punch-Out's Soda Popinski character. In the spirit mode of the game, all the fighters are grouped with the ones who debuted in the same game as them. Except for him. Despite appearing in the arcade punch out, Soda is grouped with the NES characters, and it's for one reason in particular. This is likely because he was named Vodka Drunkinski in the arcade version and got renamed afterwards in a pretty funny censorship. Earthbound is another game that appeared on the NES, but got lucky enough to get a Smash Fighter 18 years earlier. Good, but not good enough to avoid some censorship. Coincidentally, in the same game where Lucas made his debut in the series, like we've seen for Fire Emblem previously, the demo for Earthbound was not available in the international releases of Brawl, even though it was in Japan. This one's just weird. My theory is that because Mother 3 wasn't going to get localized, they didn't want to entice fans with similar gameplay. But that's definitely not a good reason, right? I just want to play some Earthbound Nintendo, what the hell? This series had one of the funniest developer oversights too. Nintendo accidentally used fan-made spirit art as the Masked Man spirit before having to later swap it out. This was crazy, but definitely an understandable mistake, since they looked very close. We still got a meme on him for it though, the same company that tries to take down fan projects left and right is using them in their own games now. Smash isn't the only game that had to change sprites though, far from it. So did the Ice Climber back in 1988, which actually led to one of the most interesting cases of Smash censorship down the line. In the 1985 Famicom version of Ice Climber, enemies called the Topies were depicted as blue seals that slid across the ice, but this didn't last when the game went to North America and Europe. This enemy was changed to these white little furry guys with beaks for fear of the message that could be sent to kids about hitting seals with giant hammers. Cause that's totally something kids are gonna have to think about on a daily basis. Better not whack a seal today. It's understandable, but this split path for the enemies way back then would have a profound impact on the trophy screen of Super Smash Bros. Melee. Which way would they go? Would they include the Japanese original enemy, or the censored version from everywhere else that those fans hadn't seen? The answer was yes. Uh-huh, depending on the version you play, the Topi's design native to that region will be the one that's in your game. 
They actually had to make two separate models for this one stupid obscure character from the late 80s that nobody cares about. This series is wild with the extra effort they put in for these little things. It's clear they didn't want to have to do that anytime in the future though, as the Topies would never be seen in Smash again. But hey, at least the Topies got into one game. Fatal Fury's Mai Shiranui, unfortunately, can't say the same. When Terry Bogard was being shown off in a DLC presentation and they got to the stage segment, everyone was waiting to see which characters would be included as references in the background. And you know what? We actually got plenty of notable King of Fighters characters here, but one of the most notable ones was left out. An omission which was big enough to the point where Sakurai had to explicitly address why she wasn't there. Where we all got to hear the infamous line, Smash Brothers is for good boys and girls. My Shiranui was deemed not suitable for some members of the audience, which I kinda understand considering the, um, design of the character. But it's definitely unfortunate. The cover-up option that we've seen in the past likely wouldn't have worked for her since her gimmick is that she's a Konoichi, who specifically dresses and moves in a way to distract opponents. Someone impervious to distraction is Captain Falcon. He's too busy racing fast and covering up his series censorship. F-Zero's Samurai Goro Spirit had a Rising Sun flag emblem removed from his cap and replaced with the Japanese kanji for Samurai, likely due to its connection with negative historical events. This was also removed on Ryugi's artwork as the emblem was taken off of his shoes. But while these cases of censorship seem more clear cut, Blood Falcon has a regional change that's much more interesting. Captain Falcon's ult based on this character got changed to say Bloodhawk on the back internationally while the Japanese version says Hellhawk. What? Okay, so we've seen Hell be allowed for some series and not others, but here it's okay for Japan and not everywhere else? Well, this is likely because of F-Zero X also censoring it to Bloodhawk and it being carried over. So blood is okay to be written about but not shown. Got it. Guess that's why Castlevania has much of its content in Smash changed over. Dracula's original artwork in Symphony of the Night contains a pool of blood beside him, whereas that's no longer the case in Ultimate to suit the game's lower age rating. Same reason for why Carmilla's spirit no longer has a bloody eye in Smash, with it now being changed to purple. Hey, at least they didn't go with pink. There's also a slight change to the series in Palatina's guidance for Richter, which brings up so many questions about the blood issue. So Alucard interrupts this conversation, and they start asking him questions. Here they ask him if he has sharp blood-sucking fangs since he's Dracula's son, but that's not the case in the Japanese version. There they cut out the part about blood-sucking completely and ask Alucard simply if he is quote, hostile towards Dracula. So this is twice now where blood is changed from the Japanese version only. Maybe it wasn't hell that was the issue with Blood Falcon then? This keeps getting weirder and weirder, but hopefully we can find an answer. I don't think that's gonna happen with our next series though. Let's talk about Pokemon. Being the biggest media franchise in the entire world is great for Smash, but with Nintendo still only being a third owner of the company, it means they don't have as much freedom with it as some other franchises. There's no shiny Pokemon costumes in Smash, and many don't change a whole lot from their default look. It's not unique to Pokemon, but there's definitely a reason for it. Same for having no human characters in the game as spirits. This could be to make the Pokemon trainer more unique and special, but I believe it's likely to preserve their representation and not interfere with what the anime is doing with them and whatnot. There's also no spin-off content in the game either, even though there's so much potential there, especially with stages. Are these all Giga Reaches? Perchance. There are small references like in Palu's Guidance that call the trainer a twerp, most likely referencing how Team Rocket calls Ash and the gang that in the anime. What's more clear cut though is what they did to Lucario, with Snake's codec calls referring to him with male pronouns in the English version due to the Pokemon largely being based on the male movie appearance of the character along with having a 7 to 1 male to female gender ratio in the games. But this isn't the case in the Japanese version. Here they use gender neutral terms when talking about Lucario, which while being more common in Japanese conversations is still possible to do in English, so there's definitely a reason why they didn't go this route. Get it? Route? Cause... Pokemon? Okay, I'll stop. Even the smaller details get a lot of spotlight with something like Pokemon though, since its games are some of the best selling on the Switch, and speaking of selling, well I mean this isn't sponsored or anything, but I've been meaning to let you guys know that I've partnered with FameHype to get the channel a website where you could get gift cards for the Switch or any of your favorite platforms. But, but mostly the Switch, right? And buy games like Pokemon or Fire Emblem Engage? Yeah, that too. But the cool part for you guys is by using the code Syroth on the site, for a limited time, you're gonna get 10% off. 
It's sick, because the card on the Switch is worth the same amount of money, you're just paying less. So it's like getting a little bonus if you want. This is something new just for you guys for making it this far into the vid. I wanted to give you guys a little heads up about the exclusive deal that we got going on. Pac-Man's a similar case to Pokemon in that the lack of unique costumes is definitely intentional, but there's actually been a confirmed case of Sakurai not wanting to include a particular Pac-Man look in the game. If you've seen anything from modern Pac-Man, you'll likely recognize this design, an updated look for the character for the 2013 cartoon Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures, a design that Sakurai vehemently despised. He was apparently adamant to Bandai Namco in negotiations for the character that if Pac-Man was going to be used, he wanted the old design. With the biggest quote to me saying, if that was rejected, I thought about dropping Pac-Man altogether. Damn, this guy hates the Pac-Man cartoons bro. I don't blame him for not liking this design, I like the old school one a lot more too, but to legitimately refuse Pac-Man from appearing in your game all about the biggest icons in history is a move for sure. In the Japanese version of Palutena's Guidance, Pitt comments on Pac-Man's design being similar to Kirby in the beginning, instead of mimicking the way he chomps as he does internationally. Waka 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 waka. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just... I wanted to try it. This is significant though, because it implies that they didn't want this slight joke to be looked at by anyone over here as an idea that Kirby was a stolen concept from Pac-Man. It might be a reach, but I think this has to be what it's about. What else could it be? Waka waka waka. Man, we have seen a few reaches lately though. Some of these franchises are getting tough, but I know there's still some heavy hitters left. So to save the best for last, I present to you now the most desperate Smash content you've ever seen. But it's a speed run. Animal Crossing. Okay, so I've seen many believe that something risque or controversial was planned to be in Isabel's reveal trailer, but never got in. This is because, for some reason, it showed Ultimate was still rating pending, even though the age rating for the game had already been revealed to be E10 Plus at the time. Maybe there was something they thought needed to be censored or wasn't approved yet? This was so random, and only happened for this trailer. For Street Fighter, there's been a couple things I've seen, like how the Chun-Li spirit uses some less revealing artwork of the character, but I don't really think this is censorship per se, since it is official art from newer games. What's more interesting, I feel, is Ryu being the only Capcom fighter to not appear in any CGI trailers whatsoever, potentially being restricted from these types of appearances. Inklings can't shoot red or white ink in Smash. Splatoon censorship, anyone? While well, it is technically Splatoon censorship, since this was the case for a long time, until some more recent years Splatfest changed that, it's still a huge reach. Inkling Girl did get censored in Mario Kart with this gesture being replaced, so there's your honorable mention. Banjo and Kazooie may have been planned to debut in the series all the way back in Melee. While being a fighter wasn't too realistic due to the legality of the character being way more up in the air since he was more relevant at the time, but being a trophy wouldn't have been that out of the realm of possibility since third party trophies would later be seen in the series. But the idea of even that was stopped by Rare as stated by Sakurai in an interview. They made the lines of communication for the team very difficult. Hero was originally going to have 8 unique renders for alternate costumes, but 4 ended up getting cut from Smash Ultimate. Erdrick was also originally going to be the default costume for Hero, but later this position would get changed for Luminary from the newer title. Trying to cover up the series past? Question mark? I don't know about that one. Actually, an instance of Smash not censoring something is when Mega Man was originally released outside of Japan, the Yellow Devil's name was changed to Rock Monster due to Nintendo's policy against religious references at the time. This change was reverted in the Sega Genesis remake Mega Man The Wily Wars, and the original name was retained ever since, even in Smash. Some still think not getting Model X in the game is a conspiracy though. They want you to forget these exist, but realistically I think it's just more of them not fitting as well alongside the original cast than actual censorship. Just like in Smash 4, there are textures that imply Rob was supposed to receive battle damage, indicated by cracks on his body. We've seen this with characters like Olimar and King K. Rool, however Rob in the final game never takes battle damage with these textures also being fully updated from Smash 4. They just weren't used. Can't show a little robot getting beat up? Speaking of Olimar, I kinda mentioned Pikmin already, but I wanted to cover something else. There's only one species of Pikmin that are not represented as a spirit in the game. The Bulbmin. They're the only Pikmin that were created before Brawl that don't appear in that game in any way or in any other subsequent Smash game. In an official Japanese poll, Bulbmin were ranked as the most popular Bulborb enemy in Pikmin 2. Does Sakurai have something against them? This is getting dark, guys. And last up we have Wii Fit, who fans were making jokes that she got her thumb censored for Smash Ultimate. There's no more bones! 
Marco, how am I supposed to enjoy this realistic fighting game experience now? I did notice though that the shirt for the female trainer is quite a bit longer in Smash than it is in the original Wii Fit, where it's really just a sports bra there. Out of all of these, I think this is probably the biggest chance of actually being intentional censorship, but not by much, I actually think the Smash design is better anyway. Looking at our board now, much of it got cleared. A rid of the most desperate reaches I've ever seen by the fanbase. To all the Where's Pyra and Mithra comments from people who haven't finished the video, fear not. I ain't forgetting about these guys. Xenoblade wasn't known for being the most censored franchise prior to Ultimate. He even let us have Naked Shulk, what could you really complain about? The controversy started with the game's spirit mode though. Mithra got more clothing added to her chest and legs as an awkward cover-up of sorts for her spirit. You could say this was done for the age ratings, but there are many other characters who show more in this regard, so I'm not sure. What I found kinda funny about this new look though is it was eventually added to Xenoblade Chronicles 2, sorta of making it a Smash original creation. While Monolith Soft and some fans clearly like the look, many aren't big fans of the censorship. But at least Pyro would stay the same, right? Well, <laughs> that was the case. Until they joined the playable roster. Mithra's outfit would carry over here, and Pyro would get some leggings added to her as well. Maybe just playing on the safe side here, but I do find it kind of weird that she looks one way in the picture and it changes during gameplay. This whole situation isn't really as much of a big deal as some have made it out to be, although I can understand being a bit ticked off if you don't like the new designs. I agree there could have been better ways for them to do it. This however isn't the only Xenoblade 2 censorship that came with this duo debuting in the roster. On the stage that came with Pyra and Mithra, fans noticed in the background that the character Breakhead is covered up more now than she was in the original Xenoblade 2. This one's more subtle, but the censorship is definitely there. In the direct showcasing all this new stuff, of course there was a spirit section which funnily had the character Numa from the game blurred out, which sent Twitter into a frenzy. Sakurai once again trying to protect against spoilers for some series, but not others. Honorable mention here also goes to the severe lack of Xenoblade Chronicles X content in the game. I know I talk about this like every video, but there's no stages, music, barely any spirits, almost treating the game like it doesn't exist. It extends far beyond just copyright. It was never supposed to be a Xenoblade game to begin with, and is one of the only big first party games to not make the jump from the Wii U to the Switch. It's definitely the black sheep of the franchise, and Smash prefers to be the rule and not the exception in this regard. I don't care, I'm putting this on the list. Calming down a bit knowing that Pyra and Mithra definitely aren't the only ones with cover-ups. Many thought that because of the way the character is portrayed, Bayonetta just couldn't make it into Smash. It wouldn't be possible. And after seeing what happened with her in Smash 4, maybe that wouldn't have been the worst case scenario, but regardless, she still made it in save for some of the expected censorship. Bayonetta's use of wicked weaves and other hair attacks no longer have the vast majority of her suit vanish when using them as they do in the main series games, as Bayonetta's outfit loses the sleeves of her hair and the rest disappears up her upper thighs. It's very understandable why they had to do this, but at least this is one of the better instances of this that we've seen, as they kept the reference in there. Bayonetta was still censored in other ways though, specifically her Bayonetta 2 design. In the original game, she has translucent openings going down the back of her legs, but in Smash they replace those openings with solid grey. From grey to purple now with Kazuya's final Smash, which had a pretty funny change in Ultimate. I didn't see this one getting too much buzz, but when he uses the final blaster in Tekken, he shouts something in Japanese with which got translated to, this will be your burial ground for Smash. Pretty ominous and devastating, right? But the thing about this is this is their official translation. What he says in actuality is, this will be your burial ground, you bastard. The ending part of this line never made it in. Adding this part makes it seem more comical to me, I don't know. But it's almost a certainty that this was taken out intentionally to lower the game's age rating. An interesting piece of regional censorship to me came in the Min Min reveal presentation. The whole thing was done when COVID was first starting and isolation measures were put in place, with translation being done from Sakurai talking in Japanese to other languages. Min Min fights by extending her arms, and he was trying to showcase that with her being further away from the opponent when he says the line, too close. This is what they call social distance, right? A seemingly harmless joke referencing the ongoing events. But this got removed for the North American version. They didn't directly translate the line here, instead going with, I'll fight while keeping at a distance, something Min Min is excellent at, they're far too close. Pretty interesting. What issue would they have with referencing social distancing here? It's not like it wasn't being encouraged in regions outside of Japan, but there seemed to be a bit more to the statement that Sakurai originally said. There was a meme going on in Japan at this time when a government official told the media crew that they were too close, that people found funny. 
I don't know the context or anything, but it became a running joke over there, and this statement that Sakurai made seemed to be referencing that more than any commentary on the real issue. So it's possible they thought people overseas would be confused, but I think this ended up being more controversial than anything. Funnily enough, this wasn't the only case of regional censorship from this same Direct. The next one involves our boy Sonic. Well, well kinda. The Direct in North America censors a shot of Sakurai's gaming setup that showcases what game is inserted in the Sega Mega Drive at the time, something that wasn't done in the overseas iterations of the Direct. And the reason for this was pretty wild. This likely stems from Sakurai's opinion that whenever he's caught playing a game, there seems to be a ton of speculation generated about whether or not the character from there will enter the battle in Smash. While I agree that this is 100% true, I do find it funny though that only the American regions are the ones they specifically pinpointed for this and not anywhere else. One of the main reasons from Sakurai's perspective was the hype surrounding a screenshot of him playing Minecraft on Switch, leading to speculation of a character from there getting in. And well, I mean that probably isn't the best example for him to use since fans were proven right in that case. But none of these presentation censorships can top what happened in the original Duck Hunt trailer in the build up to Smash 4. Here we see pixelated Mario who's supposed to be sort of waving and telling him to come on over but it really just looks like he's flipping Duck Hunt off. This was crazy and actually got changed. Kinda reminds me of the old Toad sprites where the same thing happened there. This was still crazy nonetheless, and you know, I'm kinda surprised Duck Hunt didn't have more censorship than this to be honest, with how you have to be more careful with gun use in E-rated games, but there seemed to be no issue with the Zapper. Another character wasn't as lucky in this department though. Now we've already touched on Metal Gear having a cut song, but Snake has had a lot more change than just this since Brawl. With the only installment in Smash that he's appeared in before Ultimate being teen rated, it should be expected that not everything could be brought over. His final Smash was altered to not have the visible gun be shown even though they kept the shooting in the crosshair. I guess the gun was just too realistic for this to pass. Same goes for the landmines that were toned down in their design as well, looking less realistic than they did in Brawl. Similar theming for both of these, but the next, I think we can all agree, goes way too far. Yeah. Snake was clearly toned down for this new edition of the series, which some thought was unforgivable. This was it, the final straw, well, well it would have been if they didn't do something similar to another character. Zero Suit Samus had a pretty noticeable nerf for this game, and I'm not talking about competitively. If you look at these two images side by side, it's clear that her chest has had a big size change. Whether this has stopped you from buying Smash Ultimate or not, I don't know. But it got a lot more attention than some other issues for some reason. Ridley's situation slipped further under the rug though but it's one of my favorites. In Palutena's guidance in Ultimate, Pit gets so excited when seeing Ridley shouting Ridley confirmed, Ridley confirmed, pretty much everyone's reaction, except Sakurai, and maybe most of Japan as well. There was a running joke over there around this time, I don't know if it's still a thing or not, but they called Ridley Captain America over there, referencing the idea that he was a character heavily requested in the West and not nearly as much in Japan. Because of this, the game's text is changed in the Japanese version to more accurately reflect how the fans felt. In the Japanese version, Pit doesn't even recognize Ridley, instead saying, there's an alien here that looks like a demon. Damn. They went full 180 here, he's giga hyped in the international version, and here, man doesn't even know who the guy is, like what? Call it censorship, call it Sakurai hating and technically rewriting canon cause Pit has literally been in games where Ridley's a stage boss, whatever you want, but Metroid's gotta be up there for one of the funniest series in this regard. Kinda crazy how every series in the game has at least some fans arguing that their favorite character got censored, even though we may not all agree. But if I had to make a top tier, I'd say Fire Emblem for sure. Xenoblade because of all the new cases, me because of how many series they hit, and throw Metal Gear in there too, what the hell. Oh yeah, I forgot I can't say that word, whoops. Super Smash Bros. has some of the most effort, detail, and passion I've ever seen out of any video game series out there. It's just a shame much of it can't be seen by everyone.